So, hey everyone. Most people call me Sebastian, and I'm today going to be telling you about something called Batman. And as you can see from the bats right there, it, it would seem a lot like our superhero, right? But it isn't necessarily him. In this case, it's a protocol. And there we go. No? All right. So in our case, it's a protocol, one from the Linux kernel that was in uh, 2.6.38. How many of you would happen to remember around when that is? Here we are. So the article around the top of it provides a summary. This release was in March of 2011. So uh, that was when Batman, at least, was released and implemented into the Linux kernel. When Batman was started, I'm pretty sure it was around 2008. And the thing that's interesting about it, being the better approach to mobile ad hoc networking protocol, um, it is capable of doing wireless mesh networks. And in our case, the way that I'm going to be showing you how it is set up is that we've got a few devices around the police department at the moment. And the device that I'm working with right now sees one. And in reality, there's another one that's further away. There are two devices, one that's far enough away that my wireless device right here is not able to see the one that is way in that direction behind a few uh, cinder block walls. Um, but the device in between it, which has a pretty great Wi-Fi antenna attached to it, is able to see it. And so the way that we're able to reach it is uh, going through that device over there that has the nice networking um, wireless networking device, and reaching the one that's even further away. But the first thing that is strange about this, right, is we're looking at MAC addresses as we're doing this. The thing highlighted up there is the MAC address of the NIC in the device way over in the other side of the police department. And as a result, it's routing, right? And, you know, with, with the layers of the uh, net, uh, networking layer model, um, OSI model, we're going, we should be able to see from the data, which will be the wireless, we should be able to see from MAC address, and then from there have something like IP in order to route it over to wherever it's going. But in this case, we're straight up using a MAC address, which is kind of strange and really ethereal to most people because I've kind of got an ethereal switch set up in uh, the police station here. So first thing, right, with Batman, or at least Batman Advanced in this case, uh, we are capable of networking using specifically MAC addresses. Does this bring, any, bring up any strange questions to you guys? What are the first things that come to your mind when you see that? Uh, how, uh, how's, how, how's it being routed, I guess? Uh, Batman is the routing protocol, so these devices are seeing each other wirelessly and through its routing algorithm, since it knows, since the device over there actually knows that this MAC address is in its network, it's able to reach the far further device. How do you secure the mesh? And in what way are you thinking for it to be? As far as preventing some sort of spoof man in the middle of my address. So with spoofing, um, there, so first question to you, right, is, is your thought with spoofing going to be whoever has the MAC address? Or are you thinking it would be different from what our current setup with? Well, I mean, I guess ultimately my question is what's preventing somebody else from getting on the network? 
um, ultimately, it's the configurations that we have on here. So if we were to go into our Wi-Fi settings, this one doesn't have it. Hold up. If you were to look on your phone, I'll say, right, you should see a wireless signal on there that says mesh, Project Phoenix mesh, something like that, right? In this case, uh, this is the Arizona Blockchain Initiative's Project Phoenix project, something that I have been a part of for right around a year now. Um, that network, sorry, we have configurations set up in the net interfaces. which tell you the various configurations that this one has. So for the Wi-Fi device, we have it set manually. Uh, the ESS ID for it is mesh. Uh, in reality, you should be able to see it. Wireless frequency, it's there. The um, packet sizes for things being transferred is otherwise slightly larger than your regular network or regular network devices. The reason why it's able to go through and see the other devices is we have our virtual interface, BAT0 in this case, and it sets up DHCP with, well, we have DHCP set up with the device over there. Um, technically not needed, BAT CTL just needs to be brought up and it thus connects everyone to the, um, into the mesh network. The reason why I have DHCP here, though, is because if I were to show you the IP address of this device, for some reason it still has an IP address. I was showing you routing through uh, Batman without using an IP address, though. And it's not necessarily that it's taken the IP and looked at the other device's MAC addresses and shoved it through. It's because that device over there, which is actually getting us to the internet, what I'm going to call us our super node because it has the power of the internet, uh, is actually sending out DHCP. So we've stacked our routing protocol, put DHCP on top of it, and now we're capable to use, of using it like any other network. So if I decided that I wanted to ping uh, this device, the uh, router, the one sending out DHCP, the router, whatever you'd like to call it, we'll still get ping from this device to the one that is sending us available internet. Similarly, if I just wanted to ping the internet, we still have internet access. But this one itself, this device that I'm working with right here, is not itself directly connected to this station's router. So in a way, I'm kind of circumventing its rules. I've got one device on there, and not all of them have the key to access the Wi-Fi here. But as it currently stands, that's how, current, that's how we have set up the mesh network. The idea being, we have our internal LAN area, and everything gets piped out from our super node, of which I think I might have avoided your question of the spoofing issue, right? So. Um, to, to stay on that topic, I, I would like to ask, would there, in a regular network, would there not be a similar issue? Well, is there a password to get on the, your Batman uh, the, the, the mesh network here? We can set one. You it's currently not set. I guess ultimately that was going to be Yeah, question. okay, yeah. Um, so uh, for this one, right? Uh, so the idea behind why this one is set up this way is that in uh, South Phoenix about Broadway to um, Van Buren, I believe, and 7th Street to 7th Avenue, we're planning on bringing a large amount of these types of devices, or Raspberry Pis, or whatever we can get our hands on by that point, bringing it over there, uh, providing the residents with whatever device we have, and sending all of the internet that they want to use to a larger, more capable super node. So with this, uh, Arizona, the Arizona Blockchain Initiative, the Project Phoenix portion of it, uh, is trying to provide internet access to the area which does not necessarily have that creative access to it. 
So that being the purpose, we're not putting on a password for it because we are expecting people to come into the area with whatever device they choose. The barrier to entry, however, is what's the configuration of the device, right? So if there's a password on it, yeah, they'd probably have more trouble getting onto it. Do they have the device configured at all? They'd probably need to learn how to do that. It's Linux, not Windows like what they're probably used to. Because in this case, uh, I don't have an AP setup, which brings everyone who has their phone or has a, uh, some other device into the network just like that. So if they use Batman, if they set up the proper configurations, they can just walk in. And the reason why I don't have that access point set up for you guys is because I didn't have enough Wi-Fi cards. I had the one over there, which is getting everything to the internet because I don't have an Ethernet port to plug it into. So instead, I'm using even more wireless devices to get us internet access through it. However, I can tell you that next week, I know Aaron is doing a talk on Wi-Fi hacking. I'll be bringing these devices in again if you want to see it. And I should have host AP set up on it so that you can connect to it if you'd like. Um, although in that situation, it would not be connected to the internet. So providing greater ac uh, access to internet for the area in South Phoenix. Batman itself, right? this routing protocol, which would let us do that, is not necessarily uh, the best for the entire area, because it doesn't necessarily do long distance that well. All the devices we have, though I had to go like all the way into the corner of that courtyard and it's still kind of reached, though it wasn't great, it's still reached, right? So with one of the concepts inside here, the various methods for how Batman does routing, and when it loads, I'll be able to show you it, but uh, due to those methods, it has various means by which it will go through and choose its best path. So in this case, the top one, we've got three devices that are all going in, you know, any direction you can would choose in this case, right? We've got in a full connection, 100% availability through here on wireless. And for this one, it will go 100% this way. And as it goes clockwise, you've got full connectivity. But if you were to go backwards on it with this dotted line, you would have 20% connection, or 20% uh, packet loss, I should say. So be it that Batman could be used on wireless or on wireless in reality, because of how this routing protocol is set up, it'll go through whichever route has the least, has the best link quality in it. So we get a drop by going backwards. We're only going to go forwards then, because that will supply us with the ideal um, internet traffic. Similarly, if it, will ha if it has to go through multiple devices in order to get there, or if it has to split up to go through an entirely different device, we'll be able to um, get the ideal connection even if it's going through, going out one way and coming back a different path. Just whichever one is most ideal is the way that it will end up taking. And this is largely why we decided to take Batman for the area in Phoenix, or at least for a portion of it, because as one might assume, right, with networking devices, the more devices you go through, the slower it's going to get kind of a big issue if we've got a large area and someone is on the other side of the city to where one of our super nodes are. So it will do this where if we've got perfect connection from here to say the super node, it'll go straight through. Great. But it will not necessarily be able to go back and it will be slowed down coming back because we've got three devices in between. So I don't have that set up here with me. But what our actual design would have is something like, um, it's not PFSense routers, it's uh, Ubiquiti devices, Ubiquiti wireless devices, which we can plop in, say, on top of the building, for example, or put it in other high places so it can reach a further distance without interruption. And the local devices will connect to that one, most likely, whichever one's ideal, right? 
and it will go out to uh, the super node, which also has a ubiquity device, which I intend to leave also with a Batman interface, so that anyone who wants to quickly connect through there is able to reach it. So Batman, better approach to mobile ad hoc networking, right? That be, uh, meaning that since it's ad hoc, if something goes wrong as it's there, or if someone decides they're walking by and they just need to make changes, in this case, we've got it going just fine either way up top. But at one point, three right here breaks. It doesn't sever the connection of the entire internet, however. It may be weaker in this direction, whatever it be. It still functions, though. So we're still able to go back through the other direction, even if one of them breaks and it will uh, reroute you automatically. Ground is more complex, and this is the one. So, like I said, person who's walking by, you've got device one, which is connecting you to, I'm gonna say super node is B, right? And he walks by, and slowly he gets to the other side where he's closer to N2, and that reaches you to B or at least the connection is better, and maybe he can't reach N1. As, as a result of that happening, being the mobile ad hoc networking setup, A will reroute through N and go to the supernode, B. This being documents for if it's larger, and similarly, entire, uh, an entire set of many different devices all of which are technically able to see each other. Similarly, when I showed you the trace route earlier, you could see the device in between us. Um, when I showed you the uh, devices originally with, with this, it shows up one, right? And the reason being that it's the neighbor, it's one of the closest ones, one that we'll directly connect to. Uh, so early when we were starting it, I had that up Watch had it uh, set the watch command so I could just see it change as time goes on until we eventually found a room where it couldn't actually reach this device. So um, from there, we're able to ping through the other device and get to it, showing the mesh portion of it. If I remembered what its IP was, I could show you a ping for it too. But otherwise, that's how that design is set up. Does that make sense to everyone, the routing design for it? Okay. So, you know, I started with a demo, right? So <laughs> to be fair, this one's kind of out of place, but fine. Um, and for the overview for Project Phoenix, here's the picture for what it would look like. Um, in a, yeah, I, I can't actually enlarge it. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's the largest I can do. So. Uh, idea being, here's our internet that's connected to our supernode on top. That goes down to one of our routers using OSPF to make things go faster so we don't have to go through as many devices. And lastly, our client nodes down here, which will be connecting whoever we um, provide access to or whoever builds their own access to. One of the ideas behind it, uh, if I were to go on to GitLab, nope, all right. If I were to go on to GitLab and go to my project page, go on to the Project Phoenix project page, the entire thing behind it is it's, it's open source. Everything we're doing for it, everything for Batman, is all open source tech. If someone who's in that community who wanted to get on to that network, they have the ability to set it up and get on to that network themselves. It's supposed to be public Wi-Fi. It comes with the dangers of public Wi-Fi. There's not absolutely everything we can do for it, right? But you know, the first question being, all right, so it's a mesh network. We've got the problem of who's going to look at this device, sorry, who's gonna take over that device, or maybe put one in between and stop them from being able to talk to each other, you know, to prevent sniffing in between them, because it's wireless, right? And by that same mantra, I can make the claim of we can still sort of do that with our current network setups. Not to say that that's the way to fix it, but I'm saying I'd like to have someone else also give me an answer to resolve it. 
So I, I, we've been seeing a lot about you know fifth generation wireless service, and I get the impression that uh, what the what the ISPs want to do is uh, Quest or CenturyLink wants to get out of the business of wired connections. Um, so basically, they're going to. I get the feeling that you know we're not going to have any choice anymore but to have one of these fabulously super expensive wireless services. So is this going to, you know, could this replace our current DSL connections? Um, depends on if you live in that community. And in reality, we, we don't get bandwidth to the rest of the internet, right? Our internet cloud up there doesn't get internet unless we're paying one of them anyways. So. Yes and no to that question, because they're still getting paid, just not by you if you live in that community. Um, so uh, you know, if you decided, if the world suddenly decided, we're going to switch over to this for some reason. Uh, in reality, you could probably bring your own device, connect to the public internet of whatever kind it was that you chose, and you'd have access to the internet that way without necessarily having an ISP in between. However, I'll say again, one of the main uh, issues that would be run into with Batman only is if you're using Batman, how do we, uh, we do not have very good capability of going long distance, right? So it is supposed to be the mobile ad hoc version, the one that people come in and out of or walk around and move a lot in, right? It is, as far as I've found, the ideal system for that. But it is not necessarily the greatest for longer distance communication. Um, that does answer your question, right? Yeah. So, um, w you know, with, with the wireless mesh networking thing, one of the first questions that this GIF shows you guys, right, is, what, what is the reliability of this kind of a network? And I'm going to leave this nuke up here because it's just fun to watch. But otherwise, if a nuke drops, what kind of internet stops for what we currently have? What kind of stuff would we no longer be able to connect with? Or what, we, or what would we need to do in order to connect again? Right? I'm going to pose you guys that question. What, what do you guys think we would have to do to make internet work again once the nuke gets dropped? Somewhere. I think we from China. <laughs> All right. Okay. So just buy the buy the hardware. All right. Talk to your friendly Where local was radio it yeah. <laughs> Bring back the fiber <laughs> infrastructure. <laughs> would fiber be? Would fiber? Yeah. All right. So, anyways. So. Avian packets. <laughs> the idea was this one, right? Features. Yeah. Right. IP over avian character. You're right. Yeah. I mean, Batman actually carries with bats or something. So. Um, so no, the idea in this case is if we have a wireless mesh network and it's outside the blast radius of the nuke, bring mesh networking device and just plop one along the way if it's pre-configured, if it's the public version of the internet, right? Just walk along and as you go, the more of them you plop down, as you go further, you'll still have internet connection. Yeah, it'll go slower. There are more devices. But you, it, and you'll still have internet connection, though, despite how slow it might be. You'll still have it, though. You don't need to draw out a long wire. You're getting iffy on that. I'd like to ask why. Right, there, are, there is a point for that. You're right. And to be fair, with the nuke, it might be too big. <laughs> but then to that extent, I could ask what kind of radios are we using, right? If we have a large enough radio that'll get sent with large enough frequencies, to be fair, I'm not part of the restoration project. Those who might be might have those radios. <laughs> so your local radio expert, I guess you'd be right there. Um, and on that idea, right, I go into what if, like a story that one of my ethics teachers told me at one point. That was just neat to hear, and I feel like I'd share. What if we had like biodegradable routing devices that we could just leave as we walked around a mountain or something, right? And if we had those, we could just take one mesh device, plop it here at the start, or maybe that's just something that people consistently do, and so you don't need to, and have it along the way where you'd no longer need to worry about it. 
Now, now this picture, this picture, we've got a lot of trees, right? That might be a problem. But maybe we go here. And here, that might work a bit better for longer distances, anyways. And, you know, assuming that's the case, at least we wouldn't end up like this guy, where we don't necessarily have contact with who we'd need to if a boulder fell on our arm. So, in reality, if we had those biodegradable devices, for example, fun thought being, well, we just, we have the others, I have our devices, we can just connect them, right? We're good to go from there, sort of. Don't know if he'd keep his arm. So, at one point, I had a separate uh, piece of writing that I set up, which was talking about um, connecting if the police were to be using uh, wireless mesh technology. There are some various kinds that exist, right? So Gotenna being one of them, and for them I'm pretty sure are used by the military. They have applications for your phone which uh, are used for, uh, which have encrypted communication in them, and they're on the Gotenna network, right? So those devices, if say 911 calls are on our general infrastructure today, we won't have one of these three examples that I show where the ISP's 911 service stopped working. Why did it stop working? Well, uh, the building kind of got destroyed in a tsunami or something, or maybe someone unplugged something they weren't supposed to, and you know, plenty of reasons could have happened, right? And we don't want it to stop the 911 service because we have our emergencies we need. So what happens if we have the mesh network set up instead? If we had, be it Batman devices, or be it Gotenna devices, or whatever mesh device that we wirelessly have connecting to each other, what if we just, say, put those in every police car that are around? For the Gotenna devices, those reach four miles, I believe. So maybe question is how quick they are. I haven't tested them. They're kind of expensive for my range, but if they work well, you've got not only encrypted communication, but you've got mesh communication, which, depending on how many devices are around, may be more reliable than what the current system is. And that's kind of one of the issues, right? Getting it started. If there's not many people on the network, if there's not many people using it, there's not many devices you can bounce off of to get to your further network to get you your further device. So if one of them gets cut off, yeah, he can walk back in and he'll have access again, but it being wireless, there's nothing to tug you back when you've accidentally walked it too far. So large enough amount of people, say the police station, right, if, they, if the Chandler Police Department, since we're here, decided that they wanted to start setting up mesh technology, that they got enough GoTenna devices to make it worth doing. We could have a mesh network set up, and the residents around here who also have GoTenna devices, I'm not certain how their tech works. Maybe they could help repeat the devices to go further. You can set, just set them in certain points so that they are repeaters and will go further distances from where they were to go Rather than four miles, it'll go eight miles because there are two devices you have in between. Um, and so if we had 911 on a mesh, specifically a wireless mesh in this case, might be more reliable than what our current setup for it is. So, let's see here. The issues that tend to come with the wireless mesh in general, right, are that it is a wireless technology. Anything you come that comes with wireless problems, you're going to have them in wireless mesh as well, obviously. One of the things that I had been dealing with when I was going through here was we can kind of see the device by this point, right? but it has packet loss by the time we get there. Some of them dropped and we could see the numbers grow and I thought, oh man, I found a spot where it can't reach. A few seconds later, no, no, it can reach it. So, um, reliability being one issue, right? And Batman supposedly being something that can 
uh, reroute for whichever one's the better link, that's still going to be an issue in areas with large amounts of trees, in areas with large amounts of tall buildings or something else, right? So very common solution, just put it in a high place. But not necessarily perfect for all situations. So for the idea, if you're trying to design a wireless mesh network somewhere, maybe use Batman, maybe not. Something to take into consideration. Is otherwise, is there something that you guys are wondering about? Either the mesh network that I've told you guys about or um, something about Batman that you guys are wondering? All right. Um, I have something. No, you did. Okay. Uh, how, you said you had to pre configure it. How hard is it to configure? So, nice thing on that. Did I actually? No. All right. So, nice thing on that is that on our page for Project Phoenix, We've, I've set up Ansible playbooks to automatically configure Ubuntu devices, at least, or uh, Debian-based devices in reality. If you want to go through the manual setup documentation, uh, the other person that I was working with set those up. Um, in reality, if you're setting it up, the hardest thing is uh, debugging issues, right? So there, there are some places you can search for debug logs, but for my friend and I, when we were trying to go through it and set it up, the hardest part is this device sees that one, but for some reason, this one doesn't see that one. Right? Yeah. Um, and you know, we could go through something like system CTL to see if networking was brought up properly. We could go through something like Batman logs and maybe understand what it's saying. Uh, depending on the Batman version, maybe it's because the packet sizes are too small because they increased at one point or something, right? So in reality, debugging is the hardest part uh, for any device that is set up the, like with our configurations that is at least Ubuntu-based. I haven't tried it on uh, Arch yet. I haven't exactly tried it on any of the others as well, but it should be the same configurations. Um, common problems are other networking interfaces like Network Manager or, no, not WPA Supplicant, mostly Network Manager, right? So when, when we were starting this, I was talking to you about, I, we, we don't want Network Manager on here because that caused major issues for us when we were setting up occasionally or RF kill because something is soft locking the interface when we remove network manager even. So for, uh, for setup, it had us go through a large amount of different types of networking stuff to see if it is or isn't causing the problem. So how difficult setup? I hope the playbook works. It does for Ubuntu 18 and 16, I believe. So Debian-based stuff should work. Um, but otherwise, I cannot give you any guarantees any other distro. But you said the module is already in the yeah. kernel. Yeah, so uh, Batman is in Linux kernel, right? Uh, part of the reason being if the way that it transfers packets is faster if it's in kernel. So. Um, The way you add it is either it's already there, you installed the package and it added it for you, or if you want to add it outside, uh, out, outside the package manager or something, um, Batman advanced into the modules file, and I'll just add it that way. So adding it's not difficult. For most devices, it's just installing batctl. And then how do you, is it just the additional configuration to set up the super node? Or? Yes, at least in our case. So to, to make the super node, right, um, we have Batman set up across our network and Batman set up on that device. We need a, set work, a second network interface card to connect our device to go through NAT and go onto the network. So it has NAT set up. Um, we set up DHCP on there. That between Batman and the IP. Yeah, Batman and either, uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, in reality, Batman has its own IP before, right? Because we put it on there, right? Um, so we have DHCP set up on the network. 
because that device also has a DHCP uh, server. Um, we set up NAT with IP tables so that it will go through the wireless card into most of the time an Ethernet port. If not, like in this case, it'll go through a wireless one too. Um, Configuration temper is it's no different than a normal like wireless. It's pretty IP, close IP to the, for, okay. yeah. It's pretty close to that, which is why we were able to route it through to a different device with OSPF and then get it further away, right? Yeah. So that's that's how we were able to do it that way. It's it's very close to just a regular old router that we got out of Ubuntu. Um, and to that extent, right, OpenWRT, they have Batman packages themselves. If you wanted to get Batman onto a router, you could, depending on the type of router you have and if it has firmware capability with OpenWRT. Any other questions, everyone? Okay, well, thank you. <laughs>